We sing the seventh. We can still do it. No, we can still do it. We can We all sit out. Yeah. I want to say I appreciate everybody brought food. It was good. I tell you what, man. I know what I'm going to be eating for a week. <laughs> <laughs> the menu has been established. <laughs> Nothing wrong with leftovers, are they, Doc? <coughs> Doc said there wasn't nothing wrong with leftovers, so uh, that's gospel truth to me. <coughs> Somebody else, come on. Who all's out there? Anybody home? Huh? Okay, uh, who else besides Wanda? I'm sorry, Pam. Pam are here. Okay. Bobby and uh, Joanna's here. All right. Hey, Cuddle. Okay. I can Charlotte. Okay. My goodness, it's good to have backup. All right. If you will turn, I. You may not need to. We've sung this song. Uh, for I don't know how long. Now, dive us again. Now, that doesn't mean that, that we're down, too bad, or something like that. But a time when, when all of God's people come together, it's different within the church. And we pass that stuff along to everybody else. So revive us again. We praise thee, O oh God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died in his now born above. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, thank the glory. 
real fair, so we can take the next day. In our men's breakfast, every first Saturday morning, we get together and we talk and we discuss things about the church if, if it need be. Uh, but this song hits home. If you think about it, there's a little country church. There's a cemetery where a lot of us are going to be laid. It, it's just a beautiful little song. Now, if I have to stop, you fellas go right on ahead. You know the, you know the song. There's a place dear to me where I'm longing to be with my friends at the old country church. There with mother we went and our Sundays were spent with the friends at the old country church. Precious years of memory. Oh, what joy. something good. I guarantee you that you're going to have opposition. Now that's okay. We need to stay together as a church family. Uh, all of us are different. But there's one thing that is common to us. The love of God. When I was a little fellow growing up in West Liberty about probably I left Phoenix at 10. Come back when I was 19. <laughs> Talk to <a> girl. <laughs> Told her she had little toes when I got to see her the first time. <laughs> I had, you had big toes. <laughs> uh, but I couldn't tell you what we were going to do at the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, the Church of God. I went to their VBS. They had cookies and Kool-Aid. <laughs> I could about tell you every one of them. But uh, <clears throat> life has been very good to me. And uh, I try to 
not my own, and for dear who gives me the good life. Uh, we'll have a prayer song now. It's uh, <coughs> where could I go? Now that there's a lot of wisdom in that song. A lot of times we get over across things and we just read. But there's a lot of good thinking in that song. <coughs> Somebody was frustrated. Somebody was aggravated with the world and the way things are going. And I don't know when this song was written, but you can imagine what it was like when this song was wrote, how much it's multiplied today. And so all of us need that security. I know where I'm going. <coughs> I know where I'm going. And we look for a home. I believe the Bible said, who's builder and maker is God. We look for that home. So tonight is our spoken prayer request. Let's remember this meeting. Remember this meeting? Get started off. It's uh, Sunday night. I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few people that's at their home church. Sunday night is not always your, your best night. Wednesday nights are not always your best, but anyway, the ones that's here will get filled up. We'll just have a good time. I think William told me he and Joyce were going to be on the highway, and I'm telling you what, that's just a gamble. It's a gamble. It really is. Uh, no, no. Just be ready. That's the big thing. Anyone else? All right. I'd like to thank the Lord for answering prayers. The Lord has been with you. They think they got all the cancer off his lane. He don't have to have radiation, chemotherapy. And he goes back in six months to have a body scan done, make sure they got it all. He's doing really good. And my granddaughter joined the church today, and she's going to be baptized uh, November the 12th. That makes three of my grandkids and one of my great-grandkids that got baptized each year now. So thank you for that. Amen. That should make you feel good. Absolutely. Bernice, it's always good to see you here. The lady with the quiet voice. She got to really listen. Pick her up. Anybody else? That's a good testimony. Yeah, I remember Sam. She's got some health issues. She just told us about today and got some tests and things that she's going to be having this week. So remember her. Okay. Remember Sam, Paul and Joe's daughter? Uh, could you send her a card? We need to do that. Miss Charlene, you need to go on Kathy. I'm nosy, ain't it? We took, we'll get her a card if you all can get an address, Joe. Okay? We will. Thanks for the coffee, too, while I think of it. It was so good. Anyone else? Okay. <laughs> Just think about the words of this song and see how it fits. I always like to fit a song. I told Sue today, we were singing uh, uh, King of My Life, I Love You Now. I don't know what the name, I forget the name of it. King of My Life, I Crown Thee Now, Son Shall Thy Glory Be. Listen, I always got goosebumps for starting here. It's all the way down when I sing that song. You think Find it sometime and look it up in your red book if you got a book at home. How many of you got a book at home? If you haven't, pick you one up. Pick, pick you one up. You pay for it. Okay. All right. Then we're going to say, Paul, are you ready in case I blow up? <laughs> <laughs> Living below the world. Yeah. 
love so dear, comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for each and every one that's here. We're thankful for the meal that we've had, dear Lord. We're thankful for brothers and sisters that come together to learn more about Christ. Paul tells us to arise out of our sleep, dear Heavenly Father. We must be about the Father's business. And tonight, dear Heavenly Father, we're praying that we may grow in the Word. We may learn something here that would help us even to help others. We pray for the requests that were made, dear Heavenly Father, and we know that you know each heart in this building. You know what we have need of, and we know that that Spirit makes intercession, dear Heavenly Father, according to your will. Yes. We're thankful for that. We praise you for the prayers that have answered. We always hope, dear Heavenly Father, that we don't get too high-minded and think we ask for it, it should happen, but to be happy, dear Heavenly Father, that it happened, and not take you for granted each time, but we're told in James that we ask believing, dear Heavenly Father, that these things will happen. We pray for our country, and we would hope that the leadership, dear Heavenly Father, will follow you. We pray for the other countries that are at war, dear Heavenly Father, and we pray for those uh, Christian nations that you would be with them and help and support them in the way that you know which is right. Again, we thank you for this night. We thank you for Doc and for Jimmy that are uh, going to give us a word here in a little bit, dear Heavenly Father. We're thankful that we can sit here in freedom and sing praises to you, dear Heavenly Father. For all the many things you do for us, we're still unprofitable servants, but we praise you, dear Lord, through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We got one more. The song of invitation. We sung to each other. Somebody did. Hey, I'll tell you what. Good things uh, happen when you when you get it. So uh, it's hard to introduce Brother Jim because he's been such a part of uh, of, of Lacey Creek here. He's, he's worked so hard then for the congregation, and I want to tell you he's. He still has good sermons. I already enjoy him, but we're going to let him take over right now. And I'll be doing the reading for him. It's color coded. I can't go too bad wrong, but we'll see. I will stop. Or start. Stop. I bet you all will. I want to. Uh, this is pretty good size print, but. Good to laugh, isn't it? Hey, I told Doc, I said, he said he can't mess up too bad. I said, in that show. <laughs> you can't go there. So I want Doc that messed up. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, <clears throat> going back real quick, I, I can't find the words. I've watched a lot of you grow up. Uh, I've grown up with Sister Gay. Uh, and Wilma Jean and uh, Vina Sue, that would probably cover the four that gets in the age brackets uh, that I'm in. And I thank the younger ministers here for putting up with me. I know I'm not as, as quick as I was, uh, but uh, I think that'll probably maybe happen to you. And uh, 
I pray when I leave here, if I don't die, I want to go into my world. I'll be in my world. Dementia is probably one of the most horrible things there is to the people that's not got it. For the people that's got it, they're in their world. That's their little world. And one of the worst things you can do is to try to disagree with somebody that's got dementia. And how I got here tonight, I'll never know. Well, that wasn't part of the sermon. <laughs> but if you're getting to that stage, try to handle them with ease and understanding. Just don't let them hurt themselves. That's where I always draw the line. Just don't let them hurt themselves, but let them, let them have their freedom. They're in another world. They're not in yours anymore. They've stepped out of that. And they've moved into their own little world. We've, I don't know how long we've had fall revivals. At least we, we try to go a, an April and a fall. And in the fall of October, I think it was the 16th, Brother Sue and I, I was coming to church with him, and I'm telling you, believe me, I don't brag, but I needed the Lord. I owe him all that I am. I was a baby one or nine. They let me do what I wanted to do. That's not good. Don't let yours do it. But anyway, we came here to revival, and Brother Charlie Frederick and Alaska Marshall were preaching the uh, sermons, and they would rotate both of those men, they, they could what I, I call, they could bring it, bring it, you know. And the night of the evening that happened, I kept saying to myself, Charlie, get over it. Charlie, get over it. I was that anxious to be baptized, to come forward, and, and, and let's get that straight for the remission, be baptized for the remission of my sin. Now that's 60 One. Yeah, years. Think about that. It's not always been easy. We've had our ups and downs in this church, and I want to tell you, God come out on top. Amen? Amen. And I've seen it about all. And been through it about all. But God lives in this place. God will live in this house when I'm gone. <coughs> as soon as I've been in here since those years, that's a long time. It's good to have people that love you. I cannot imagine living in a world where love did not exist. But we're getting close. The only thing that's holding it together right now are the people of God. It's all that's holding it together. So we need to love each other. This is our little realm. This is our this is our house. And it's a good place to have to come to. And get together with people that love you. Now what we're going to do, Doc is going to read oh, well that's it, Bob Harper. <laughs> <laughs> I just announced West Liberty's revival. <coughs> what did you do? What are you doing with mine? <laughs> Okay, both of them. <laughs> what, what we're going to do, if I would ask you the question tonight, what do you think is the most damnable thing that will cause people to miss the kingdom of God? Think a minute. Think a minute. Give you a minute. What would you say, Sister Will, would you? Neglecting to be baptized with remission of sin. Okay, baptism. 
and the remission of sin. Somebody else got one. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Unbelief. Unbelief. But right at the very top, I think she hit it. Baptism. Or the lack of it. You seldom ever hear it preached on the radio in those programs. And you say, well, Jimmy, why do you want to preach it tonight? Same answer I've given a lot of people down through the years. I do it because you will do it. The churches of Christ preach it because nobody else will preach it. You're afraid of your association. You're afraid of the church. That's as important as anything else. And we're going to start tonight with that very one thing. Uh, let's see, after this, simply, let's find it. Me and him both are beginners. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, you read, if you read. The first reading come from uh, uh, Matthew three thirteen through 15. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. You are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. All right. The key thing in his that he said it for it, uh, we need to fulfill all righteousness. Now that was before the church. And yet here he comes to John the Baptist and he said, John, I need to be baptized. And he said, you need to baptize me. <clears throat> now listen to them last words. Words are important. They can make you happy or they can make you mad. They can take you to heaven or they can send you to hell. Look at the last few words in that passage from the Master. But Jesus answered and said to him, and he said to him, it's fitting for us to fulfill. That means fill it up. Not halfway, it's not three-quarter, it's all the way full, fill it. Fulfill all righteousness. Now that was before the church. He had not died, he had not been <coughs> buried, he had not rose again, but he saw the church. He saw it coming, it knew what it was, he knew what it was to be built. And he said, it is the fulfillment of all righteousness. If my Father in heaven requested to be baptized, how in the world do preachers preach today that you don't have it to have? You don't have to have it. That is going to be one of the most damnable things that is going to say, uh, send people to hell than any one other thing, I think. That's an opinion. But if Jesus needed it, how about us? Are we, are we greater? Are we better? Can we do it another way? But think about it a minute. Let's see. I think I'm done now. The next uh, reading is a list in Acts of the, the, the baptisms in Acts. And the thing I think that to remember about all of them, that baptism was a part of these. Pentecost, Acts 2, 36-41. The Samaritans, Acts 8, 12. The Ethiopian eunuch, 8, 35-39. Acts 8, 35-99. Paul... Saul, Acts 9, 17, 18, Acts 22, 16. Cornelius, Acts 10, 47, 48. Lydia, Acts 16, 14, 15. The Philippian jailer, 
Acts 16, 29 through 33. The Corinthians, Acts 18, 8. And the Ephesians, Acts 19, 1 through 5. How can you throw something away that's mentioned in every case of baptism? How could you do that? My father wasn't baptized, and I blame the man that talked to him. I blame, I don't blame him. That's in the past. It's gone. But he didn't mention that to my dad. Who's the fault? Don't be afraid to speak. The preacher was. But my dad also was the fault for not knowing what he should do. The best thing you can do is get yourself a Bible at home, read it, do exactly what it says, and quit worrying about whether you're going to fail or not. The young preacher's coming into this pulpit. Study. Study. And God will link it together the way he wants it linked at that particular time. But you have to study first. You have to know what you're talking about. We're going to look at two tonight. Just two of all of them. I think there's, is there 10 or 11 conversions in the Bible and every one of them has got water baptism you can debate anyone with a few small verses if they would accept the word of God they won't accept the word of God you're wasting your time you're spinning your wheels move on to somebody that will you say that's harsh no it's not it's true it's true I've talked to people that may never be a Christian. For the simple reason, for some reason, they could never bring themselves to obey what the Word of God says. Rebellion! It's in us all. It's built into us. We're more bored, more rebellious of authority. How many in here was not rebellious to the authority? Raise your hand. Do I see anybody? We were rebellious to authority, weren't we? If you were five or six year old, or seven or eight, you were rebellious. And it comes right on into womanhood and manhood. There is this rebellion against a God who gave us life, gave us breath, gave us strength. Why do we do that? God is not the only power in the world. And he is loose. He is loose. People will talk to me about prophecy. You think about prophecy, you're living right in the middle of it. You're seeing some of it firsthand. And governments become evil. <clears throat> and if the governments become evil, the people they govern after a while become the same. That's one of the reasons that baptism is not. Satan has looked at all of the qualifications that Jesus said. He looked at all of them. He said, you can hear them. Why, you can even believe them. You can even confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You don't need baptism. He picks the one 
that we hate the most. And all of us have had rebellion in our life. And I pray to God tonight that all of us have gotten rid of it. If we rebel against ourselves, how can God help us to be happy? Doc, it's going to take a few minutes. All right. If you will lead the Ethiopian eunuch. Acts 8, 35 through 39. Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. That example, this was a smart man. He didn't pick somebody up off the street. The Ethiopian eunuch had control or, or possession of the queen's money. And they had been up to Jerusalem to worship. May God bless your little heart. Joyce and I have been through a lot of things together. Her wedding. Uh, <laughs> what she say? Oh, I said I saw you going in the water sign. <laughs> <coughs> this was an important man. And yet, God looks down and he sees him and he's sitting in the chair and he's reading from the book of Isaiah. If any of you ever read Isaiah, you can get confused right quick. Now, he was reading that part where it said that he was slaying, he was beaten, he was... And he had a question. And God saw the man and he said, Fill up God's servant. He said, Go join yourself to the chariot. And Philip did. And the Bible says that the Ethiopian eunuch simply said, how can I understand this except some man show me? The Bible said, Philip opened his mouth and preached unto him Jesus. Baptism's not in that. Can you add that to it? Absolutely, you can. <coughs> because in the last few words that I've read, he said, seeing here is much water. Where did water come in? Because Philip said, you need to be baptized for the remission of sin in water. And it will wash those sins away. Seeing here is much water. What does him believe? Oh, now today, we'd have to go to an altar to pray. Who is our altar? Somebody tell me. Jesus Christ. Jesus is our altar. When I got two-thirds of the way up through that aisle, I was whipped. I was whipped down. And Ronnie Pelfrey, I've seen him sit back there and cry and get a hold of the back of that seat. And I said, son, you got prints in that seat. Still are today. <laughs> yeah, I, there's something about it. The rebellion. But now he didn't. He's a very smart man. And he said, seeing here is much water. 
Philip said, if thou believest, thou mayest. 2,000 years, uh, you're hearing it today by the man of God when somebody comes forward. Think about that. Men of God have preached. Men of God will be preaching when the world wraps up. But you better be careful what you preach. And then there was another amazing thing. It'll disappear. Like that. Look at it. It's in there. God caught him away. Isn't that beautiful? And then the Bible said that the man went on rejoicing. That'll do something for you. As long as you carry the burdens of sin and hate, you'll never be anything but burdened down in your life. You show me what you have to do in the Bible that's being done today. Show it to me. It's not in there. If I mess up this day, all I've got to do is go home and get on my knee if I can get down and say, God, I have sinned against you and before heaven. Please, 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 please. Forgive me. And he's never turned me down yet. Not one time. And Philip was caught away. Think about that. Think about that. Out of nothing, God forms it and makes it. And it wasn't anything for him to look down and see the man wanting to be a child of God, but not knowing how to do it. And so that's what we're going to do here tonight. We're going to find out how you do it. Nothing more and nothing less. Something that stood for over 2,000 years. You tell me that's not power. That's power. And that power belongs to all of us. When we stay within the love of God. Let's see how we come up here. I think the next one is uh, conversion of Saul. The conversion of Saul, Acts 22, 12 through 16. Then a certain man and I, a devout man according to the law, having a good testimony with all the Jews who dwelt there, came to me, and he stood and said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that same hour, I looked up at him. Then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you that you should know his will, and see the just one, and hear the voice of his mouth. For you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, why are you waiting Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Paul had been praying three days. We may have been praying five or six or maybe two months before we reach the point of where we submit ourselves to the Lord. The Ethiopian eunuch knew he was ready from what he has read. He had the sympathy for the Christ that died and gave his life for him. And he was touched. And here, I want to go back and, and soon I talk a little bit. We maybe should have printed prior to that. And he told Ananias, you go down to the... the Certain house, certain street, pinpointed. And he said, I'm afraid of him. He's killing people. He's having them put in jail. And you want me to go down and talk to him. 
I think I would have done the same thing. I really do. I would have been afraid to do it. But we went on down and uh, you may know the rest of that story. <laughs> God, God put it back on Saul. Saul had all this power and he was doing this and he was doing that. He had warrants to the church to take these people in before power and, and they would be killed. God said this, you are going to suffer many things from me. You thought you'd hurt, hurt the church? I took care of that. But he said, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. And boy, did he. When you read the history of Saul of Tarsus, a man who has sat at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the wisest men of that time, and he became a lawyer under him. And he hated that new movement. He hated it. Or anything about it. Hate is a cancer. Do you realize that? Hate is a cancer. This is truth, right where I'm sitting here now. I don't hate anybody. I might hate their ways. But I can't even do that if I'm not careful and I lead it, let it lead over into something personal. Hate will destroy a person. Hate is destroying nations right now. But you know something about it? Where are we at in the will of God anyway? Where are we at in things that are supposed to happen? And I try to find them that I don't fight against them. I would never want to fight against my Lord. But we live in confused time. What is of God? What is God's will? Where are we at in prophecy? We're right in the middle of some of it. You're seeing it. And I hope and pray I'm wrong, but I, I think our country is going to get to go through some bad things. Because we spit in his face. We trampled all over his word. We have done everything that was ungodly that can be thought of. We have done it to him. But we is the world. We are not of the world. We are of the master, the love of the master, the calling of the master, the heeding of the master. I don't know of anybody that I don't love. I'm not going to go back years, something that happened, <clears throat> and it's still eating them up alive. I call it Abraham's boys. They've always fought. They've never got along. Not since Sarah threw Hagar out of the house and said, I won't have that boy touching my boy. I won't have that boy around my boy. And he left. Long time to hate, didn't he? I don't understand it all. I don't profess to know it all. But I know one thing. That if you're not have God in your heart tonight. And things are not right in your heart with God tonight. You need to get it right. You may not see tomorrow. you get help, you know. <clears throat> People just don't think enough and serious enough. We're not invincible. We 
This is my family. This is my house. This is your house. And if nothing else comes out of this revival, except that we have a deeper love for our Heavenly Father and we have a deeper love for each other and respect, that would be wonderful. And so if you're here tonight, I think we've about covered everything. You know, you, know, you need to just, uh, <coughs> for the new Christian, the book of Acts, the Gospels is probably the best place to start. It gives you a background. And then we get into the book of Acts. The Acts is about the church. The church that God bought with the blood of his son. The church that is still alive today and will be alive when he comes back to take it with him to heaven. What will separate us from the love of God? That question is asked in the Bible. What will separate us from God? Sin. Ourself. We separate ourselves from the love of God. And we do that by our attitudes. We do it by the things that we do and we say. And we shove God further away. We can separate ourselves from God. But the good thing is, you can be redeemed, you can be brought back. <clears throat> There's been times I sit right back there in my little chair. I ain't had a good day. And I said, I, I need some help. I need some picking up. Has anybody else ever said that? I need a little pick up. People specify places where you are to be converted. You are not saved. And people use that word today. You're changed, you're converted, but you will not be saved till you stand before God and hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over me. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Now you're saved. You've got it in there. You've got it made. You're home. I'm not saved. I'm converted. I've had my mind changed. I've got a new mind. And I've got the old mean, evil mind that I had before. Get your Bible at home. Find time. 30 minutes. I can't read anymore. Mama Sue has to read me everything. <clears throat> oh, what a blessing tonight if you can read. you can read. So we're going to close out tonight. This was, of course, night of revival. Don't become discouraged. Come every night. You'll be surprised what it can do for us. Let me see. Is there anything else? Yes, sir. Doctor, you done good tonight. I thought we'll run over there. <coughs> huh? You've got one more to read. Oh, three. Yeah. You've got one more? Yeah. Matthew 11, 28, 29. Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Now, how about that problem? Solved. Problem of really just what I got through preaching. You can control your life through the Word of God. And in a few minutes, we're going to give the invitation. And if someone is here, and if you're not happy with your baptism, we'll do it. But I pray that we're all happy. 
So when someone asks you about that, I just, here it is, right here it is. I just believe what the Bible says. It's not going to stop the argument, but it'll slow it down a whole lot. I don't know what's going to happen no more than anybody else knows what's going to happen but God. And if we're followers of God, he's going to take care of us. That's the biggest thing that we need to know. God is going to take care of me. He's going to take care of me. Does anyone have a word before we sing the closing song? I think you should put up with me. I've had some kind of allergy or or something. And uh, you just put up on me all the time. My craziness, my nuttiness. But I'm going to be happy. I ain't going to let nothing come away way then. That's what we all need to do. We're going to stand and we're going to All of us, have, uh, we've got an account sheet somewhere. I like to sing about this old, this old uh, song. I can remember at some of the homecomings down at the shed, at uh, Nori and, and Orpha and Bertie, we'd all get together and those ladies could sing. And I love to sing it. And when I sing this song, I still hear the voices tonight. <coughs> the old account settled. You better get them settled up. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven I know the town was saved for sin and unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went to the keeper and said long ago, long ago, long ago, I settled it all. Yes, the old account tonight that a man will lay down and think of his family and protect them. 
this and be thankful. When a nation forgets God, the Bible said they are turned into hell. There's very few meals that I eat that I don't think about somebody that's less fortunate. I hope I never get to where I'm not thankful. Anyone have anything to say and add to the service tonight? Thank you. I've enjoyed it. I'm about out of shape for preaching. <laughs> now, I'm right where I need to be. Anyone else? Brother William, would you care to come? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Somebody say something. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm hearing things. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, very, I'm enjoying every minute of it. Mostly. Uh, Brother William, would you come up and dismiss us? He has a nice, soft voice. And, uh, I love to hear him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another blessed day. We thank you for the opportunity to come together here tonight to fellowship and worship and praise your holy name. <clears throat> we thank you for our many friends and family and the many, many blessings you have given each of us. As we part and go our separate ways today, be with us, guide, guard, and protect us. Be us safely to our destination. Heavenly Father, <coughs> excuse me. We ask these things in all uh, we Jesus Christ, our Savior's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lady.